Palms growing in the landscape are susceptible to a wide range of diseases, disorders, and pests. Diagnosis of a particular palm problem often requires either a comprehensive understanding of all of the possibilities or a systematic key to help the diagnostician focus on the cause of the problem. Today, there are many websites and mobile apps available to help diagnose the most common diseases and disorders affecting palms. These keys include damage caused by insects, identifying insect pests of palms, and links to fact sheets about each specific problem or pest. I'm Dr. DeBusk, and this video will discuss the particulars when it comes to diagnosing the problem and submitting samples to labs for diagnosis. Since few people have intermediate access to analytical laboratories, most diagnostic keys are based solely on visible symptoms. Fortunately, visible symptoms are sufficient to diagnose many palm problems. Visual inspection is also the first step in determining which diagnostic lab to use for further analysis and which tissue should be sampled for analysis. A laboratory analysis should always be used in conjunction with the field diagnosis of the problem. At the same time, never rely on a laboratory diagnosis without also making a good faith attempt at a, the field diagnosis. The two diagnoses should agree. Your initial field diagnosis will depend on the palm tissue to sample. For example, for nutritional deficiencies, you select the youngest fully expanded leaf and remove four to six middle leaflets. In contrast, for Texas Phoenix palm decline, you have to remove internal trunk tissue. Unless otherwise instructed, plant tissue samples for disease diagnosis should not be placed in a plastic bag. Instead, place tissue in a plain paper bag or in a box packed with newspapers. If sending entire leaves or portions of the petiole, it is acceptable to cut the leaf or petiole into smaller sections and bundle together with tape or string. See the homepage for the UF Fifus Extension Plant Disease Clinic at the address shown here for further information on submission, submission sample form, and pricing. Just because a laboratory report suggests deficiencies of one or more nutrient elements or the presence of potential pathogens, does not mean that those deficiencies or pathogens are the actual cause of the particular problem. In the case of palm diseases, false negatives are a common problem, especially when the wrong tissue is sampled or a poor quality sample is submitted to the laboratory. If field and lab diagnoses do not agree, you must re-examine the problem to determine which diagnosis is more likely and if the right sample received laboratory diagnosis. In some cases, you may need to start from the beginning as neither field nor laboratory diagnosis may be correct. Sometimes a laboratory diagnosis is necessary because two diseases have identical symptoms. For example, Fusarium wilt and petiole blight of Canary Island date palm have similar symptoms, but one is lethal, Fusarium wilt, the other is not. If confirmation of a field disease diagnosis is necessary, it should be conducted by a qualified plant disease diagnostic laboratory. For example, molecular tests are necessary to confirm fusarium wilt, lethal yellowing, and, and Texas Phoenix palm decline. Only the University of Florida currently offer these services in Florida. Sampling the correct tissue is critical for an accurate laboratory diagnosis. For example, lethal yellowing is confirmed from internal trunk corings, while petiole blight pathogens only infect the palm leaf petiole or rachis. In both cases, sampling, say, leaflet tissue of a palm affected by either of these diseases would have yielded a false negative. Thus, it is imperative to make the field diagnosis as accurate as possible in order to determine which tissue to sample. One common error in diagnosing palm problems is to sample roots. In the landscape and field nursery, root rots of palms are uncommon and are usually the secondary result of a palm being planted incorrectly or in the wrong environment. Examples include planting a date palm in soils that are routinely waterlogged or planting any palm too deep. A diagnostic laboratory will usually be able to isolate potentially pathogenic fungi from roots, but these fungi are seldom the primary cause of the problem observed. This is an important distinction for management purposes, as one needs to first correct the primary cause if possible. Otherwise, soil sampling for potential pathogens is not recommended because there are always potential pathogens in the soil. Root rots of palms growing in containers are more likely to occur because of the poor soil aeration, but even in containers, the root disease is usually secondary. Sometimes it is not possible to make a confirmation of a field diagnosis until a dead or dying palm is cut down. For example, palms affected by Gamma derma butt rot 
may die without producing conchs from the lower trunk area. However, when the palm is cut down and multiple cross sections are made of the trunk, the disease will be easily confirmed based on the pattern of discoloration within the trunk and without the necessity of a laboratory diagnosis. Most nutrient deficiency problems can be readily diagnosed by visual symptoms alone. For most palm species, diagnosis should rely on visual symptoms rather than a leaf nutrient analysis. Baseline data for nutrient sufficiency has been developed for only a few palm species. Therefore, without a comparison to a known nutrient sufficient palm of the same species, a leaf nutrient analysis can be misleading. There are situations where multiple deficiencies may be present on a single palm. Symptoms of these deficiencies may be present on different parts of the palm, but may occasionally be superimposed on the same tissue. A common example is potassium and magnesium deficiency symptoms, both of which may be present to some degree on the older leaves of the palm. For these situations, leaf nutrient analysis may, can be useful for distinguishing multiple deficiencies where the symptoms for one deficiency may be masking those of another. Leaf analysis can also be used to confirm or clarify a diagnosis based on visual symptoms. However, there are exceptions. For example, leaf analysis is not particularly useful in, for diagnosing iron deficiency in any plant, and it may not accurately assess the boron levels of a palm at any given time due to the often transient nature of boron deficiency. On the other hand, leaf analysis is useful for confirming chronic boron deficiency when symptoms are present on multiple leaves. In order to obtain useful results from a leaf analysis, the proper leaves must be sampled. Leaf nutrient analysis are based on samples consisting of several leaflets of pennate-leaved palms or leaf se segments of fan-leaved palms taken from the center of the youngest fully expanded leaf. Depending on the nutrient deficiency, this may or may not be the leaf exhibiting symptoms. In pinnate-leaved palms, the youngest fully expanded leaf should have all of its basal leaflets or spines in some species expanded out and perpendicular to the petiole axis as in older leaves. To complicate matters even further, it is possible to have both a nutrient deficiency and a leaf spot disease. Furthermore, some nutrient deficiencies look like a leaf spot disease. If you cannot decide which problem you are observing, then collecting samples for both a disease diagnosis and a leaf nutrient analysis may be necessary. However, this will require duplicate samples and may require sampling different tissue on the same plant. As explained previously, leaf nutrient analysis is based on leaflets from the youngest fully expanded leaf. Leaf disease samples should be the leaves exhibiting leaf spot or leaf blight symptoms. Soil nutrient analysis has often been employed in the diagnosis of plant problems in the landscape and field nursery. Unfortunately, this technique has limited value for this purpose and often leads to erroneous conclusions. Just because a nutrient element is found to be deficient in the soil does not mean that the plant is unable to extract sufficient amounts of that element from the soil. Alternatively, a palm may be suffering from a deficiency of an element that is present in sufficient levels according to soil tests. Soil analysis can be useful for diagnosing problems such as high soluble salts, a disorder with symptoms very similar to those of chemical toxicities or even potassium deficiency in some species. Soil analysis may also provide useful information regarding soil pH, which could affect your choice of corrective fertilizers or explain why a deficiency is occurring. For example, manganese availability in the soil is soil pH dependent. When collecting soil samples for laboratory analysis, it is best to scratch away the mulch or other surface covering and obtain a cup or more of soil from the top four to six inches of the soil profile. Sample several areas under the canopy of a single palm or from under the canopies of several palms if they are all affected by a single problem. These samples should be thoroughly mixed and about one cupful of the mixture taken to a soils laboratory for analysis. In this video, I hope you learned about field diagnosis versus laboratory diagnosis and how to submit samples for nutrition and disease analysis.